Hello, and welcome to Vod of Consciousness with Sientira. I'm Sientira. This is not the Paragon. This is, in fact, my male necro, Erethos. You can support me at patreon.com slash Sientira. I'm on Erethos today for a little bit of a, a special a special event. It's November 1st, which is the day after Halloween. As you might notice, there's some pumpkins over here. We're in good old Drockner's Forge, and it is all Halloween mode. Now, Halloween is one of the holidays that occurred... When, uh, you can see the, the moon there, I really like how the Halloween moon looks in this game. But it's one of those, uh, it, it was the first holiday that Guild Wars 1 experienced. And so they did, uh, they dressed up a number of places for it. And one of them is Drockner's Forge. I don't know that a lot of people come here these days. Because, quite frankly, why would you? But, back in the day, when the game first came out, Darkner's Forge was kind of the endgame place where people hung out. This was the first place you could get max level armor and prophecies. From like Morgren over here. Uh, so there's things like the costume brawl and some other events and random lag spikes for no reason. But this is a spot where you could get actual like rating 60 armor uh, for the for the first time in prophecies. And so Darkner's Forge was a happening town as it were back in the day obviously it is pretty silent these days but what ended up happening is a lot of that stuff got centered in the um the cities of lion's arch xingjie island not kaineng and Commodon. so we might go check out some of those other places now i just want to double check here because i think the tomb of the primeval kings also gets set dressing yeah it totally gets set dressing for for um for this i mean look at that that is that is craziness in fact i am going to uh i want that one i want that that for the uh where's good old print screen there it is that's going to be the thumbnail but anyway so this this area here also gets all dressed up for uh for halloween and, uh, of course, so does L.A., as I was mentioning. We're going to lose a couple of people in the party who don't matter to have in the party. And uh, you can see there's actually people here. And there's some quests and stuff going on, too. Um, so, I, it might be a little uh, late to actually see Mad King Thorn. I was wanting to kind of try to record yesterday, but unfortunately it just didn't, didn't happen. Um, on Halloween itself. Mad King's Guard are level 12 necromancer henchmen that you can add to your party so you can actually travel with them. Uh, but we have here the Sorceress of Essex and uh, the Countess of Hakewood who has a bunch of quests. So we're, we're going to do some of these, I think. So uh, let's... Have you come to join in the revelry of the Lunatic Court? Heirlooms of the Mad King... Ah, the sounds of screaming peasants. Tis music to my ears. It's a tragedy that the world experiences the glory that is King Thorn but once a year. I can still taste the delicacies from the grand feasts his courtiers were treated to each night. Devastating famine or not, our glorious monarchs knew how to prioritize the division of resources. Of course, the commoners weren't thrilled with his economic policies, but before our beloved king had a chance to tell them just what he thought about their opinions, his reign was cut short with a carving knife. That is why his royal squashness has sent me here to perform a mystical ceremony of ancient magical er, magic. According to his calculations, which are as infallible as everything else about his majesty, he is imprisoned behind a series of magical seals that prevent him from materializing in the mortal realm more than once a year. The return of the Crichton royal bloodline to power has destroyed the first seal, weakening the barrier preventing our most glorious king's permanent return to your world. I am as excited as an inquisitor in a room full of dissidents. Now, I'm no expert on magical seals or summoning spirits from beyond the grave, but what I do know is these sort of fancy rituals usually require some sort of artifacts to work. At least every sacrificial altar I've ever seen was quite cluttered with seemingly random knickknacks. Prior to his tragic death, King Thorn had three possessions dearer to him than any others. Unfortunately, a horde of revolting peasants burned them, along with his palace, most of his courtiers, and, well, him. But don't fret, I have an alternative. After his untimely pitchfork and torch related accident, many of our most, beloved, our most benevolent king's possessions ended up in the hands of his ungrateful thieving servants and other unworthy swine. 
We must reclaim them, and by we, I mean you. I have located three suitable heirlooms. I trust you are as eager to please the king as I am. Okay, well, let's let's go see if we can hunt down some heirlooms of the Mad King. Uh, out in the Black Curtain, so we're going to be going to Ye Old Temple of Ages. And we will be also adding Ye Old Ogden Stone Healer and Ye Old Cost back into my party. So let's go, uh, go gallivanting around the Black Curtain, shall we? Hmm. I just need to go over this way for the first item. Defeat Bryce, the stable boy, and recover King, T King Thorn's most prior prized half-eaten apple from his saddlebag. Defeat Jeffrey the butler to recover Mad King Thorn's left slipper. And defeat guardsman Brofus the deserter to recover Mad King Thorn's copy of Moa Soup for the Demented Soul. Okay. Um, I mean, most of these things are not terribly threatening. Uh, let's see. You are making use... Okay, Master of Magic was probably stripped, but whatever. We got it back. Actually, I want my map up. I don't know why I'm running through the swamp. It just seems like a good idea at the time. Ah, yes. The energy management of a necromancer. It is a crazy powerful thing. Uh, yes, I will pick up those wood planks, thanks. So, um, for those who are unfamiliar with it... Wow, this is a crazy looking staff. Um, Mad King Thorn is a... Basically a jack-o'-lantern headed dude. It's what they do for Halloween in, uh, in Guild Wars. Both Guild Wars 1 and Guild Wars 2. Uh, Mad King Thorn has not gone anywhere in the... 250 years in between things. I should not be auto-attacking with those things going on. I don't know, Talcora, do you need some energy? Have some energy. So... He actually shows up himself on Halloween Day, usually. So I don't think I will be able to uh, get an audience with His Majesty, the King of Bad Puns. But um, we can at least do some of these quests that are available once a year. I don't have a whole lot of fancy things to say. Stand back, mortal! In life, I was the greatest warrior the world has ever seen. Armies fled at the mere sight of my presence, says Bryce the Stablehand. Villagers would torch their own homes in hopes I would show them mercy for saving me the trouble. But I show no man mercy. Ha 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 ha! Kings handed over their crowns. The gods... I heard you were a stable boy. Stable boy? Uh, no, that was my brother. Ha! Stable boy? I was a terrible and fearsome force of sheer power. Fine, I'll take your word for it. I'm not looking for any trouble. I simply need to get something King Thorn left in his saddlebag. What? I checked in there centuries ago, and there was nothing in there but some nasty half-eaten petrified apple. See? So, wait, you found a petrified, chewed-on apple in a saddlebag, and you kept it for some reason? Well, yes, of course. You never know when something like that might come in handy. When could that ever come in handy? Don't judge me. Now, what are you looking for? The apple. And you wondered when I would find a use for such a thing? Do you honestly think I'll turn over the sot after a treasure without a fight? Best me, and the apple is yours. Well, that was underwhelming. Um... I need to f defeat Jeffrey the butler. Oh. Okay, that's taking us south. 
It probably would have been best to try to pull some of these quests, like, group them together. Oh, well, I didn't. Uh, I don't feel like fighting every single one of you. Hallows, thanks. I'm just going to run past them. Uh, something, just while it's on my mind, uh, that I've been working on is a uh, a sort of codex program for randomly generating pools of skills to use. Uh, because, and, and then I, what my intention is is to do some of the Zaishin quests with them. Uh, because one of the things that happens in this game is that skills kind of fall like the the pool of skills that you end up using most of the time uh, is much smaller than the total number of skills available it's just like in magic the gathering how there's going to be a bunch of cards available to you and you only really maybe use like 10 percent of them or something like most of the skills don't end up getting used for various reasons so i thought it would be interesting to uh, make a program that uh, allows me to randomly generate pools of skills to use, kind of like the idea of Codex Arena. So it'd be like, oh yeah, you can... Okay, who's on... Okay, Gwen's on straight passive, which is ridiculous. I'm looking through to make sure everybody's on guard. Guard is the most generally preferable. Occasionally you want passive. Rarely ever do you want aggressive. Um, that's just generally not any any good. Okay, I'm gonna pick up this hammer because it's here. So those guys, we can armor is probably not doing a whole lot here, to be honest. Well, I don't know how I'm supposed to get coins that are stuck in the middle of a tree, but. Everything's aggroing. I don't need everything aggroing. Let's just ignore everything aggroing us, shall we? Or try to. Uh-huh. It's just like they're not te terribly threatening unless you're getting, like, stuck on trying to chase them down. Uh, but yeah, so Halloween, like I was saying, was the first one, so there's a few more outposts decorated for it than there are for some of... I feel like there's some holiday that gets less decoration in, uh, like, not being decorated in Drakkar's Wars and stuff. Winter's Day, I think, does, though, because it was also old enough. I don't know. In general, a lot of the holiday stuff predominantly occurs in um, Lion's Arch, Commandant, and Xingzhe Island, or Xingzhe Monastery, specifically. That's just kind of how it goes. Um... But used to be Drakner's Forge was pretty big for them back in the day. Before the port town nature of Lion's Arch made it more significant. Relatively speaking. I'm gonna wait for some of my party to actually that's kind of silly. We're gonna just make our way over here and into the zone transition, so it's kind of unimportant. Okay, I'm body blocked. No need to be body blocked, yo. Sometimes that happens where things desync between the server and the client like that. And you just learn to get used to them in the game, unfortunately. Like, that's the solution, is just get used to them. 
But yeah, so I've been working on this uh, this Codex program is kind of what I'm calling it. To, and then I think it'd be fun to do Zaishin quests in that with, or using a limited pool of skills. Um, ah, there's Jeffrey the butler. What do you have to say? Were you the Mad King's butler? I'm trying to gather some items for for him. What? He is back? I won't go back to that degrading life with him. You can't imagine the indignities I suffered. You can't make me go. No. I mean, here, have some degen. Oh, smite hex, eh? Mm-hmm. Man, it's nice to be able to do stuff from cast range. Um, okay, so we've gotten the middle one. Now we need to defeat Brofist the Deserter. Um, which is apparently in Scoundrel's Rise. So that's a little bit of a ways away. Let's use the old fast travel. Get there. Gates of Cred is a weird mission that's really easily skipped. Mm, can you hear my chewing this uh, delicious cottage cheese and pretzel? I do quite enjoy this particular snack for some reason. Um, in that, I find it delicious. Gotta get plant fibers out of these abnormal seeds. Oh, a highly salvageable hammer. Lighting. Um... Nice, just labeled monk. Okay, that's going to actually be a little bit of a walk over to that. These merc oil are not terribly threatening to us, but they're going to be slightly annoying. Um, could I have just brought icy veins instead of spiteful spirit? I wonder. Like, spiteful spirit is a powerful spell. Icy veins is just kind of a generically useful catch-all. I definitely had no reason to bring weakened armor. That was kind of an oversight on my part. The stuff here just doesn't have the um, durability to warrant it. And frankly, Serenia is probably doing the most damage of anyone with whatever the heck her Master of Magic build is supposed to be. A Master of Magic build, specifically, is what it's supposed to be. Well, I mean, I didn't get a thing on that, guys. Anything. <laughs> Mostly what these Margoyles serve to do is be annoying with using Deep Freeze, so... Um... Okay, we're just gonna need to keep going around. Icy Veins probably would have been a better choice of spell for me, though, of Elite for this area. But that's okay. It's not a huge deal. Alright, she's onslaughting. Which is actually probably pretty decent on her. I wanted her to be able to do something with the adrenaline that assassins can gain. Uh, and so that seems like a good idea. I have like 80 armor. That's pretty high, actually. Man, Necromancer energy management is just ridiculous. I forgot how strong Soul Reaping is. It's just been so long since I've actually played a Necromancer.
Aha! Spiteful Spirit getting some hits in. Actually, I should not attack. I've got... Uh, Spirit Shackles is one of those hexes that's like really, really, really annoying to have placed on you. It's probably better against the enemies than I think, but most of the time they just die so quickly that it's kind of irrelevant on enemies. Uh, what it does is whenever you attack, you lose 5 energy. Which, needless to say, is quite powerful in terms of being able to disable stuff, but is um, a bit unexciting. Uh, to actually use against enemies for the most part. Uh, yeah, go in here. Have some, have some energy. And again, weakened armor's not doing much because. So the skill used to be a hex, and then it became an enchantment after cracked armor's. or uh, just a spell after cracked armor is introduced. Cracked armor doesn't drop armor below 20. Or below 60, rather. It's minus 20 armor, but capped at minus 60. Halt, fleshy one. I'm not looking for trouble here. All I want is King Thorn's copy of Moa's Soup for the Demented Soul. King Thorn? By the gods, he'll tear out my heart. It doesn't look like you still have a heart. That won't stop him. You don't understand. I was instructed to protect the king, but it's hard to stand your ground when you have an angry mob running at you. I won't let you take me to him, and I won't let you take my book. This thing has gotten me through some tough times. Losing a job, fleeing from my life, dying an agonizing death. These writers know my pain. If you want this book, you'll have to take it from my cold, undead hands. He's brofist. Ow. These guys are actually dealing some serious damage to us. I mean, all we need to do is kill him. So the fact that we're about to wipe is kind of irrelevant, but... You know. There it is. Okay, Countess. She says, Excellent! As you can see, these items were far too valuable to be allowed to remain in the hands of the unworthy. I'm pretty sure I just felt a seal break. Either that, or I've had too much absinthe. Will you accept our reward? Which is actually really good. Uh, let's see. Commandeering a mortal vessel. Oh my goodness, this is a lot. Okay. Ah, it's you again. The precious artifacts you gathered surely brought us one step closer to allowing our most wise and noble king to remain in the mortal realm year-round. You've proven to be a most useful servant. It's time to complete the next step of the ritual. His Highness's soul can't rightly return to the mortal realm without having a body to unite with. Deep in the swamps of Krita, near the border of the Maguma jungle, lies a great mausoleum that houses much of the nobility from generations past. Truly a who's who of wealthy dead people. I need you to claim our gracious king's mortal vessel so we may prepare it for his return. Search the mausoleum for the elegant sarcophagus and you'll have our corpse. Oh, one more thing. Watch out for dragons. The thought of the Mad King's soul floating around on the loose frightens me too much to say no. Uh, what are you about, ghoul terror? Uh, I'm not the biggest fan this holiday I ever had, you know. I'll be glad when people stop running around scaring the pants off one another. There's plenty out there that's terrifying without the tricksters at play. Real horrors, like driders and demons and doom. A harmless joke can flutter a weak heart as much as a bona fide brush with death. Anyway, I wouldn't be here if I wasn't ordered to. You've got to do your part, the sorcerer said. It's your duty to the coven, she said. Stop hiding under the table, she said. And then she gave me all these holiday accessory tokens. I'd be happy, happy to give you one, but I need to gather, let me check the note, candy corn. I know you can get it in those trick-or-treat bags, but that would involve... Fighting creatures or traveling to the underworld. I would never. Uh, right. So, I think this quest... Um, yeah. Okay, that allows you to be, be able to get a ghoulish accessory token. Um, and you can get that from some of that stuff. Uh, I will need to clear out my inventory by, before I try to open any of those. Um... Okay, so we need to 
do this. Travel to Majesty's Rest and enter the mausoleum. Okay. Majesty's Rest is all the way over there. Let's clear out my inventory and eat some more delicious cottage cheese and pretzels. Um, over there. I like this song. Granted, I like this entire soundtrack, but, you know. Uh -huh. How is salvageable means four earning gets, I gotcha. I don't know why I have this, but that's worth selling. Undertaker's not going to be worth anything. That's is what I'm saying. That's just merchant fodder. Okay. Uh well let's merchant fodder the merchant fodder. Ooh. Nature Abyssal. Okay. Where's the merchant? I know I saw the merchant around here. Oh. There we are. Always important to empty your inventory. I don't know why I have these. Alright. Let's get um, Ogden back in here and let's get Koss back in here. Do I want to keep running Spiteful Spirit? No, let's actually go ahead and... Um, one moment. I want to identify, move over to Soul Reaping Hat. I'm going to have so much energy. It's going to be great. Icy Veins is just going to be more useful. Um, and we can armor is a little underwhelming. Mm. Oh. Ooh, let's bring Eben Vanguard Sniper Support. That one's fun. And uh, do I have enough for Cry of Pain? I'm not sure. Move like a dwarf is really versatile. Actually, let's just run Snowstorm. That's probably pretty good here. Um... That or something else. Good question, self. Hmm. What is this? Ah. Yeah, I think it's probably fine to keep running that. Um, probably. Probably pretty reasonable. Okay, cool. Let's go out there. Okay, so we need to make our way over to the Talmark Wilderness and uh, over to Majesty's Rest over there. Which is going to be a little bit of a hike, unfortunately. There's no, no two ways around it, which is part of why I want Koss with me, because he has charge. And that helps with the, um, the distance considerably. I don't think I care about Spine Dallow. No dorm really fits on a Necro Bar. I kind of want to just make a super long Halloween special. I don't know. Yeah. Ooh, 15 energy for that. That's sweet. Okay. 
Yeah, okay. I'm liking what Icy Veins is, is cooking. Ooh, a trick-or-treat bag. Don't mind if I do. Okay. We are now going to go down this way. And, um... As we go to the Talmark Wilderness, which we can then take to Majesty's Rise. This is the best way to get there, though. Not because you have a party of eight. Otherwise, if you're going from the Maguma Jungle route, you would have a party uh, that is of only six. So, that's obviously less preferable. What I learned last time I tried to go through here is these Inferno Imps are pains in the butt. Man, so much energy. Crazy. I'm used to the weird energy management stylings of the Paragon. It's just, like, totally different. Oh, that guy got, uh, got hit. Does this always inflict bleed? Yes. 76 piercing damage and begins bleeding for 17 seconds. 10% chance of doing an additional 756 piercing damage. If it's a char, it's a 25% chance instead. I think. Rather than 35% or whatever. I don't know. It's a nice it's a nice spell. It's really fun when you get the um, the bonus damage. Very dramatic. After we do Winds of Change, we'll probably be coming this way quite a bit. Yeah, those things... Don't take much piercing damage. Uh, cause there's some important locations around here for future story stuff. I felt that. Suffering is probably less exciting on this bar. Yeah, minus two is not as good as minus three, but that's okay. Maybe it should be faint heartedness. What are the specs on faint hearted investment? Mm, it's also minus two. I don't know. It's hard to say. Faint heartedness is really bad with spiteful spirit though, because you want to increase the enemy attack. I don't know. Those guys are just taking straight standard. Standard issue damage from my cold. That's cool. Guess I might as well go up past these trees. I haven't gotten any of those 10%, but eh. Those guys are probably rangers, but these guys are necros. So I imagine these guys have just 60 armor, which takes printed damage, but enemies can have a bit of a wonky setup that way. Oh, yep. Yeah. Uh, and we get a little quote here. Balthazar, bless my strength, teach my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Uh, which is a reference to something. Yeah. These guys are, do not like getting hit by friggin' high... Damage cold. I don't like it at all. I mean, they're also level 13, so they're just not that durable in the first place. But, uh, yeah. Akutu Village. As that sign says. Man, Snowstorm is solid. Wow, 63 damage Snowstorms is pretty ridiculous. It's like they're Incendiary Bond. But yeah, they can actually be really dangerous just because burning is a very strong condition. And they do have pretty reasonable fire magic spec. So they do respectable quantities of damage with the fire part. 
But burning is just really dangerous. It's 14 damage per second, which is just very strong, so. I don't know if we have to fight Rot Scale. I hope not. Obviously, my team's build is um, not optimized for fighting Rot Scale. In that case, Spiteful Spirit would be better. Incidentally. Ooh. Hmm. Generic dialogue. I appreciate that they gave us uh, some of the King's Guard. I really like the uh, effect of that particular tonic. I think it's really cool. Where do you think you're going? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hit the 10%. You could tell because he took 900 damage. Yeah. Okay, so there's a thing there called Enter the Mausoleum. It does look like we're going to have to kind of power through, but they did give us some NPCs to help us in that process, so hopefully that goes a little bit more smoothly than some of my previous attempts have. We can see why it's worth so many experience points, though. Ooh, nice. Yeah, these guys are just pain. I mean, that's reasonable. Ow. I don't know who did that, but it wasn't particularly impressive. Oh, uh, yeah, we got the smoke wraiths behind us. Um, send my pick a target and stick with it, would you? Oh, uh, yeah, they can't get me up because frozen soil. That makes sense. Hmm. 46 gold is not nearly enough to buy off death penalty that I'm going to be accumulating here, but we'll see how this goes. I just need to enter the mausoleum, so I don't think I actually need to defeat Rot Scale, but it's going to be kind of hard to get up there without doing that. So we'll see. Um, it would be more optimal to have some smiting monks, but... Well, at least the Mad King's Guard is still around with their bone minions. Hey, fellows. Oh, man. The incendiary arrow spam is just... excruciating. Oh, Quickening Zephyr. It does not help. But a bunch of things suddenly dying, Des. Woo! Whoa! Okay, that was a rot scale. He got me with the Desecrate Enchantments of, like... I don't even know how, what you'd have to do to get that much damage off Desecrate Enchantments.
Granted, he's level 30. I don't know how many attribute points he gets, but yeah. I mean, this is actually going pretty well so far, quite bluntly. Because route scale is real difficult. Um, on account of all of the damage he can do. And then they put you in an area where you're trying to fight uphill against a bunch of rangers that are shooting down on you and using incendiary arrows to hit all of your party and set them on fire. So, it's a pretty nasty setup. Um, it's definitely one of the harder, like, boss but not really a boss encounters. Just kind of in the open area. I think they beefed him up over the years, though. He used to be pretty pathetic. Oh no, our Mad King's Guard. Whatever shall we do? I mean, we've gotten through the hard part, so it's not bad at this point. But I do want to get that last rotting dragon out of the way. Yes. Oh! The Mad King Scarred is, is immortal as the Mad King himself. Excellent. Okay, I don't know why those guys can bleed, but they can. Oh, Deafening Roar, I think, dazes and stuff. Oh, he bleeds. That's convenient. On the other hand, those Feasts of Corruption hit like a truck. Let's go grab my loot. Loot. Ow. Ow. Well, my attempts to get my loot just failed horribly. I think I'm just going to enter the mausoleum, thanks. Don't actually need to defeat Rot Scale, thank goodness. He has a ludicrous amount of HP. This area is cool looking. I don't need this map. That is a useless map. And second thought, Well of Blood, probably not the optimal thing to bring here. Oh, executioners probably aren't oh, fleshy. Okay, I'm just getting wrecked. It's probably my own fault. How do you even resurrect me with 1 H? Oh, cost is using significant return. Okay, some of these things are flashy. Okay, and now we are looking for a source mausoleum for a sarcophagus worthy of a king. I imagine it's going to be the thing that stands out to us as an interactable object. There's an elegant sarcophagus over there. Um. Oh, goodness, my party. Gwen, please stay alive. Thanks. Okay, good. Zondra also has a res. I have blood ritual. I'm going to use it now. Oh, 
Oh, good thing we didn't go charging forward too quickly. Keeping an eye on my allies' energy since I do have the ability to uh, recharge them, as it were. This is a large group, is what I'm seeing. Party is wiping though. Well, great. I don't know if this area has a resurrect or not. Gonna find out. Okay, it does. Cool. Also, that snowstorm was super effective. Let's just say it would be going smoother in here if we hadn't had to um, fight our way in past Rot Scale. And been somewhat inadequately prepared for that endeavor. Oh, I'm dazed. I'm not going to pretend I can cast anything. Oh, okay. Dazed is gone. Now I can cast things. Ow, 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 ow. Apparently that was on recharge. Well, I mean, I wanted to get you energy, Talcora, but you're just kind of too dead. Man, I am not good at this whole giving people energy thing. Also, why are both monks still dead? Okay. All I'm going to say is probably don't have the optimal party configuration. Uh, let's see what's going on with his elegant sarcophagus. Oh, it just has a skeleton ranger in it. We don't want to use a skeleton ranger. Okay, let's go wipe on this group. Hopefully not. Yes! Oh, that felt good. I mean, most of the time you get, like, a bit of reasonable-ish damage, but sometimes, sometimes you just get the straight nuke, and it's amazing, and I love it. And that's why that skill is cool. But sometimes you get the straight nuke. Uh, let's give Gwen some more energy here. Soul blood ritual thing is something I am not especially good at. Nuke? Nope. I'm gonna give somebody a migraine though, which is no good. Um. Welp. You know what this calls for. Pretzels. 
and cottage cheese. Hmm, there's another elegant sarcophagus. It's kind of a cool map. I don't think we can see this one as often as others, for whatever reason. No. Hmm, I was thinking about opening some trick-or-treat things, but... I thought I'm going to summon a miniature oxy. Let's see. Hmm, that's good against melee, isn't it? Yeah, that's useful. Ow, 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 ow. Ah. My armor, um, is, like, I get plus 10 armor, but I take more damage from holy because of my insignia. So, yeah, those are especially nasty for Okay. So we're after this other elegant sarcophagus. Uh, there's a couple in here. I don't know which one we actually need. I guess I'll find out. Um, you. Oh, move, 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 move. Out of there. I'm really glad they gave us the Mad King's Guard. That really helps quite a bit, actually. Enough HP for this? Yeah, I think so. Too many dudes at once. Plus that smite hex really hurts me. And again, Zandra's the last one standing. Zen is technically a good resurrection choice. Because she also has a resurrect. But Yeah, sorry guys, this is just gonna be a bit of a, a slog. And um, short from going out and coming back in with a different team comp, there's not a whole lot I can do about the sloggy nature of it. Realistically, I kind of wish that I had replaced um, Suffering with a and Well of Blood with different skills. But it's a bit late for that. I really wish my map was working. It's a bit late for that now, unfortunately. Um, for those wondering, I would... Let's see... I would probably drop the blood magic entirely and go with, like, Enfeebling Blood um, over Blood of the Aggressor and, like, Insidious Parasite and something else, potentially. Um, I'm just not getting a whole lot of value uh, out of those two spells, so I would drop them. And, and I basically, I dropped blood uh, magic. Uh, at least down to the, like the three. It's just for potentially blood ritual. But um, It is possible that I could open some of the um, things and get something useful out of it. But yeah, and this is just going to be a giant pile of dudes. Okay, where's the monk? Or maybe there isn't one. Okay. Sure, I accept this. Uh, 
I don't know what's with the Rod of Sacrifice and this Bone Dragon, but... Okay. Uh, MM type stuff. I thought he was dead, but he must have just been really close to being dead and not actual dead dead. Okay, let's clear out some of these drops, by which I mean pick them up. Man, I'm really bad at Blood Ritualing mid-battle. I just kind of get absorbed with the normal stuff that I'm doing. Which is not optimal, by the way. Yeah, they're just using Endear Pain to get a bucket of health back. Um... I should be more aggressive about Blood of the Aggressor. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to cast anything while that's going on. Dazed. Oh. Okay, Talkor is down. Ow, I've got... Is that Shatterstone or Mirror? Either way, I don't want it going on. Need to be more aggressive about weaknessing some of these warriors, though. Why are you being called Mercenary Hero 3? Random. Okay. Uh, we've got ourselves some elegant sarcophagi down this way. We're just looking for... Mad King Thorn related paraphernalia. And hoping to find some. Please do not be meteor showering us, thanks. Probably in this one, because this is kind of like the last one. We'll see. It's always possible they want to try to send us somewhere else. Signet of Agony is an interesting choice. Man, you do get so much energy as a Necro, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I don't think I can pick that up though, because my inventory is full. Fine. Okay, come on. I've been searching. Um, ooh, that piece of concept art. Noise. I think this map gets used, like, predominantly only during the escape sequence at the very beginning of Eye of the North, which you guys haven't seen because I don't have a character that hasn't gone to the Eye of the North. What? What am I looking for, though? I don't think I've gotten any messages that it would be. Uh, just the occasional message about, like, giant explosiony things and other such. But you, you get what I'm saying about this feels like I'm going rather deep into this place and I'm not finding what I'm looking for. Or anything. For that matter. Uh, hello? Anybody out? Okay, well, that's an invisible wall. Let's go back. Let's go back the long path we took to get here. I have a neat area. Oh, there's our uh, Mad King's Guard. That's cool. Thank you, Koss, for your charge. Much welcome. I find it interesting how Koss is the last person in my party, but he shows up in this location, in the 
the ordering, and I'm not sure what causes that to happen. There's just some weird quirk in the back end, but it's kind of an odd one. Okay, maybe I need to go that way. Or maybe I missed interacting with sarcophagus. Maybe I missed interacting with this sarcophagus specifically. Let's see what happens when I interact with this sarcophagus. Okay, quest is updated. Uh, I need to see the Countess for my reward. Let's do that. Yeah. Okay, Countess. Ah, uh, yes. I figured picking out the corpse based on the exquisiteness of his casket would provide a vessel of sufficiently noble blood for his highness's soul. Oh, don't give me that look. We would have used King Thorn's actual body, but, well, let's just say the revolting masses got rather creative with it after his untimely demise. I assure you, you would not want to have been tasked with fetching that cadaver. Here's something for your troubles. You may want to wash your hands, by the way. Okay. So, an ingenious plan. The time draws near. Can you feel it? The seals that divide this world from our realm grow weaker. We must press on, and we still means you. I've located our final target, the ingenious Ettens, which can be found on Perdition Rock. Ages ago, when King Thorn still ruled Krita, the Ettens sought to overthrow him. They hatched a plan, a cunning one, I will admit, to dispose of our most exalted liege by means of a rock. A rock bigger and more improbable than even your wildest imaginings can fathom. Don't try! In response, King Thorn found those responsible, the smartest of the Ettens, and banished them to Perdition Rock. And there they have remained, biding their time and plotting their revenge. If our king is to return to this world, this Etten threat must be extinguished. They must not be allowed to prevent his coming. Okay. So we need to go fight some Ettens. What do you do? Oh, this is some random solo quest. Watch a bunch of microphone tonics and... Right, I will look at that later. Um, How long is this? Okay, you know what? You know what? This is like an hour. So, rather than make a, like, three-hour episode, I'm going to go ahead and split this one here. So, uh, next time we will continue Halloween and um, see what we can find in Perdition Rock. So, until then, everyone, take care. Bye-bye.